have three minutes each. All right. So, next proposal. Next one's that? Belly, you're up. Somebody's talking to you. I'll do um, Daniel's proposal first. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Do we have orders? Orders? <coughs> So he handed this off to me. Basically, we would like to see if Occupy Richmond can um, endorse and also be added to the national call list of occupied cities to um, put out a statement of solidarity for the May Day general strike. Uh, it's on May 1st. It was started by LA and Long Beach. Um, and on the conference call earlier in the week, there were many other cities who've already done this as well. Clarification? Yes. I, I just didn't hear. Um, you said uh, endorsing May Day, right? Yes, by putting a national call out. Okay, yeah. Yeah. For the general strike. And also, just to give you, uh, I guess, an announcement. Madam Facilitator, could you ask Chris Dorsey to stop? Uh, because we're in process here. All right. I know. Okay. So we're going to continue on. Chris, if you can't sit down, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Please don't make me do that. All right. So, Bentley, will you? <sighs> All right. So, are there any other points of points of information or clarifying questions on Bentley's proposal to endorse May Day and put out a national call? No. Can you both? All right. Let's vote. Let's see. Okay. All right, we're going to go straight to vote. All in favor of formally endorsing and putting a call out for May Day, can I see your, can I see your support? All in opposition? Yes. Woo. All right, we just want to say I'm supporting May Day. Okay, one, I'm sorry. I'm not saying Okay, so one in opposition. Um, so we pass. Consenting. May Day. Bailey, is that your only formal proposal? No, I have two more. Two more. Okay. Um, this other one is also for take down the corporations. It's for Occupy Richmond to also put out another national call in support of uh, uh, in support of taking down the corporations. Other cities have done this as well. We just want to go ahead and get on that call list as well. Is that clear? No. no. Okay. Okay. Reread it. It's the same yeah. type of proposal. I need clear language. Okay. It's, it's the same type of proposal, just like the May Day strike. Okay. This yeah, that is also wasn't clear either. <laughs> I don't understand what you mean by a call out person. I'm sorry. A national call. Who's putting a national call? We are. We are along with other major cities. Okay. So national call. And I'm putting out a national call to action. To action. For the main agent on strike. Okay, so I thought I heard some endorsement or statements. Well, I guess I'm asking the GA to endorse this national call, is what I'm asking. If that's what the language that we're using so we just endorsed. on a national call to action for May 1st. If there's not order in the room, we're going to have to take a break. I think that's the kindest thing that we can do. Are we all in agreement and order? No break. We're going to take a five minute break. Is that the only alternative? Yeah, can we just ignore that? Can we just have the, passed? can we can they the leave the room? If you actually would like to leave, you have to take this conversation outside the room. It's really I feel like the body's looking. Can, can we have this conversation outside? Can we have this conversation outside? I'm not talking, Ashley. I'm not talking. I'm not saying anything. That's exactly what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. Mayday.
Sheriff legs? Yes. Cool. Yeah, several shots. Um, according to our current process, uh, if the individual is speaking to temp check or stack, I believe it is okay to talk to those people during uh, in the meeting at any point for purpose of getting people's ear, etc. Um, maybe I, I'm lost in process, but I thought that was important to point out first. Um, as a way to fix the solution, um, Although, personally, I really don't like the idea of ejection. Perhaps a, a three-tier uh, uh, um, process. First is a warning. Second is as a stern warning. And third, there would be a vote for ejection for that particular day. Three strikes. All right, that's a for the day? For the uh, day, not continually. Can I, can I attempt check that? For the purposes of this meeting, that we would have one warning, one stern warning, and one evic and final eviction. All in favor? All opposed? <laughs> there's two. There's two. I'm seeing too much against that. That's too complicated to go into right now. But I think that it is a really good structure, and you should work with people about that outside of GA. Will, you were next on stack, and then Chris, and then the gentleman in the back. I think we all know what the problem is, and this is a problem that's been going on since day one, um, and this problem needs to go. Simple as that. I, I, I can't I can't I can't pacify it anymore. I can't be politically correct about it anymore. He just verbally threatened and um, harassed me just because I told him he was annoying me. It it is, by the process this this individual needs to be removed from this organization because I, I I'm honestly he's just causing way too many problems and I'm I cannot I, I just can't do it anymore. I'm with him. I can't do it anymore. I, I'm not going to come here just to for the Chris Dorsey show. Okay, I think we're I think we're bringing up a really important point that this block kind of evolved from a point of process to a point of a one specific person. Uh, that person's up next in stack, Chris Dorsey. Yeah, um, I was actually just looking for a paper that was that was sent to me. It was an email that was sent to me by by a member. I blacked people's names out for. Uh, um, for purposes of 
keeping their identities uh, um, secret. Uh, I've discussed these issues with Bentley. This started with uh, myself talking to Harry Hancock about something, and then William Carino had to had to you know chime in. And I was like, I came over to him, and I was like, you had a problem with me from the beginning, and in any way you want to handle the situation, I'm ready for it. And he said, sit your old ass down, which is what was said, and then I called him a son of a bitch, which hey, is what we have, we have a kid over here. So, Will you watch your mouth? Excuse me. There's a, look, look I'm, I'm telling people what happened. Because, watch your mouth. Because, Look, you're not I'm blocking. I'm blocking. I don't care. I didn't see a child in your. Well, you I'm now know there was a child. Mic check. Mike check. Mike check. Yeah. Everyone who wants to work together. Everyone who wants to work together. Everyone who's in the here. Everyone who's here. Everyone who's here. In the spirit of solidarity. In the spirit of solidarity. Let's embrace that. Let's embrace that. And continue to stack. And continue to stack. So next, sir, please. Let me help everybody out for a minute. I got a good friend in this room, and I'm not going to point him out. The problem is not Chris Dorsey. The problem is that we are not intimately connected with the process of, enough because it is the general, it is the body of the General Assembly that is supposed to enforce the process. So when you see points of disorder, we're all as a collective supposed to point to that disorderly person, whoever it may be, and ask them as a collective body all at once. Can we please get back to business? It's because myself and you and the rest of these folks in here, we are not intimately connected with the process. Get intimately connected with the process so that the process can guide the body. It's obvious that we're not intimately connected with it because we're not operating within it as a unit. That's the problem. It ain't Chris Dorsey. Can I get a 10 check on this comment? Another block. All in favor? Yeah. Oh. All in favor. Yeah, so we're on staff. Who's next to the general? Yeah, we have a lot of blocks. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I've been waiting here patiently. It's okay. Uh, quite frankly, uh, although I personally have no issue with any this, single person, block. this is a block, and there's context that I'm adding to. Uh, I do have serious issue with the idea within this organization to be able to uh, use profanity in the um, area of small children. Uh, I work with small children on a regular basis. That bothers me. Um, I'm sure you have your own opinion, sir, as I think that um, that little one, you're awesome for being here first and foremost. But I want to be a place that can have children around. And if we're using profanity, that's a problem. Thank you. That's my block. Um, if it doesn't stop, I will have to leave. All right, we've got a block within a block. Um, <laughs> and I support his, the original block, I support his block, so. I think that the two blocks go together. What I'm hearing is we have something that we need to, we need to have some kind of mechanism for ending disorder, in which Sir seconded in the same vein, that we need to be more familiar with our own process so that we can come back to order. And here we have Harry saying something more specifically that swearing in profanity in front of children is. <laughs> All right, Graham. I want to I want to second what um, Sir said. I also noticed that D had his hands up. I just want to make sure that you got in sack if you wanted to be. I did want to be. Thank you, Sir. Okay. Um, I want to kind of second what Sir said and point out that at any point that we allow ourselves to get so frustrated that we are shouting out without waiting for the process as we've developed it to bring us to, you know, to come to that. It's basically, anytime we disrespect the hard work of our facilitators mm -hmm. and, and don't, you know, wait for it, we are encouraging that behavior that we don't like to see on everyone's part. Mm -hmm. Any, and, and, it, and the point, it's sad, because if somebody else is doing it, it makes it really easy for us to do it, for us to lose our own discipline to do it. But every time we allow our discipline to come down as an individual or as a body, we encourage tacitly that that exact behavior to continue, continue every single time. 
And I think that the single most powerful tool we have to dealing with disorder is to be extraordinarily disciplined to all of us at all moments of the process, as challenging as that is, to always redirect back to the facilitators and say, these are the people who we've entrusted our process to. They're not going to be perfect every time, but we've got to entrust it to somebody, and these are the people we've chosen. And if we don't want them to be there, then we'll ask them to step down. But until that moment, these are the people we look to to keep this thing flowing. And I think our facilitators have done a great job tonight. Um, and, it, and as much as I love you, sir, but that was a great example. Right? You know? A Any time that we, we devolve from the process that we have agreed upon, and we start shouting out, and, 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 and you know, jumping in and making, because in that way we are taking space, right? Somebody else has their hand up. Somebody else is patiently waiting. Somebody like Harry who patiently waited with a block while other people were getting called on. Not because our moderator did something wrong, but just because she missed it. And that's okay, and then we can help redirect. That patient waiting, that kind of discipline, is what keeps us all on track and is extraordinarily powerful. And, and so, and I'll even point to myself. I yelled out and did a mic check to try and regain order. That was, you know, I'm just gonna, you know, like, we can all work on this, myself included, but that's the way we're gonna find order. That's the way we're gonna keep this going forward, is by being extraordinarily disciplined and building a clear, cohesive, and kind of concise process that is effective and that we support for making sure that when somebody doesn't maintain that discipline like us, we find a way to deal with that, which could include ejection, possibly. And I'm glad it was brought up. Thank you. Okay, so there's four people who are waiting to speak, um, and we're going to call those four people. I would ask that we close stack now and let these four people speak. This is a really important issue. Um, I'm not sure that we're having like, clear decisions being made tonight about what we've seen, um, but I would like to plug the facilitation work group meetings every Wednesday at 7, <laughs> <laughs> because... Um, it's really important that we, we do hash out this process. The one thing I'm learning about committing myself to facilitation in 2012 is that everyone has a different idea of what the process is um, and that hearing concerned voices are, is, is extremely important um, and there's also, they, there comes a point when an individual has taken up too much space and time. And we need to all recognize what taking up space and time in the conversation is. Um, we're all here to speak. If you look around the room, I think you'll see a lot of people who have not spoken tonight. So that said, we've got four people in the stack, um, and then we're trying to move back on formal proposals. Uh, D, Megan, Philip, Teddy. Oh, I called this later. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So we've got five. We've got five, and then stack is four. So, you know, I'm not a wordsmith, and I don't like colorful language, and I think we're doing a lot of use of colorful language to, to mask the real problem. Anytime somebody is physically threatened here, it's a, it's a serious problem. And the fact that we haven't acknowledged that, you know, is shame on all of us. The reality is, since I've been coming here, it's been systematically the same entity that causes confusion amongst the body. And if we're not going to say that that is a, some form of cancer, where you can threaten one of us, and we simply say that, act like it didn't exist, I'm troubled by it. I'm troubled at the fact that we're not confronting the real issue. You know, I, I wonder, really, the reactionary forces that I see here, are we really here for Occupy, or we are, are we here for <clears throat> arterial motives? I see people use the, the term occupy for their own selfish means, and, and it's not in accord with what we say collectively about, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm bothered by that, and I'm bothered by how we talked around the issue. Any time that you can just occupy and hold this conference hostage, it's a problem. 
And we can't say it's a problem with the process because you can't physically eject somebody. If a person doesn't respect all of us as individuals and don't respect the process, then we need to get rid of the person. Consensus, and then he kept talking, and he shouldn't have kept talking. And I would advise that the, 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 the faculty or whoever is facilitating not speak to him. You have to follow the process, and I agree with this with the gentleman that was talking earlier. But you did follow the process, and he broke the the, the, the process himself. And I don't know how you deal with that, but I think that's what you should discuss if you're going to ask people to leave, because you're never going to. That's why we have consensus because you're never going to get 100%, and you don't know if somebody's planted here to disrupt on purpose, and that comes up in a lot of camps. And so you have to move on, because you've now wasted an hour of your time, which could have been spent on other stuff. So I say that you uh, ignore and avoid and try to remove the cancer and keep going with your 90%. All right. Can I get a temp check on that? Everyone in favor of what she said that's more about when someone disobeys the process or breaks the process as opposed to what do we do about disorder. Okay, so we're, we're crystallizing this. Next one's Philip, Teddy, Chris, Mark. Philip? So this is more of a point of information. Several other occupations have been good in their process means of uh, dealing with disruptive people. I was, when Occupy Norfolk was visiting, I spoke with their facilitation team, and they have a three-step process. The first step is a five-minute break. The second step is asking the disruptive individual to take a five-minute break. And then the third step is telling them to leave. Can you repeat that, the other occupation facilitation process one more time? The first step would be the entire GA taking a five-minute break. The second step would be telling the individual, the disruptive individual, to take a five-minute break. And the third step would be asking the individual to leave. All right. And if it's if it's a recurrent problem, then the person would be told they're no longer welcome at any GA. Would you be interested in formally proposing that to the GA? Uh, yes. All right. So all in favor of adopting we're still, we're going to go back to stack, but we're going to take the time to look at this, what other occupations have done. So first, we take a five minute break. Second, we ask the individual to take a five minute break. Third, we ask the individual to leave. This is a formal vote. All in favor? All opposed? I see one opposition. I see two oppositions. I see three oppositions. I see four oppositions. Doesn't pass. <laughs> We're going to continue in stack. Okay. Right. I was just going to make a point on that. The only reason. Hey, excuse me. Oh. I'm so sorry. I can't let you speak. All right. <laughs> We're still in stack. You can go back on stack if you like. All right. So we have Mark. Oh, Teddy, then Mark. Okay. Teddy. Do you know what? I joined this occupation at the beginning. A lot of you all in here, and I'm going to call it like it is. 
A lot of y'all are playing some really bad games. You have sat in this church and cursed across the aisles. There are other individuals in this room that know they have been dishonest. They have done things to Chris. He is not the only one that has been threatened like Phil. I saw him hit Chris Phil like he was a matador. Phil like hit him like a bull. He's threatened to break Chris in half. These are things I've seen with my own eyes. There are individuals in here that think this is a joke. Like when the church was filled, and who did you say to Chris when he was speaking? Set the F down and all of this. How do you all expect to get away with this if you are guilty of these yourself, things yourselves? How can you help the people in this city that need our help if you want to play these dangerous games with each other? It's not right. He's not the only one that needs to be ejected. There are several people in here, and I'm going to speak about it. I don't care whether you like it or not. You're playing these dirty games just because he might not agree with you or because he comes up with a suggestion, his ideas. Don't sit there and look stupid because I'm going to call it like I see it, my brother. You have been dishonest. This whole thing, you got to I keep just walked out. Can I have someone volunteer? To you time? got um, um, several people that work with you, but remember, this is on the color telling you. When the seeds you plant will come back on you, young man. What goes around comes around. Okay. And there's a lot of different people in here that need to be ejected. They know who they are. They know what they've done. And now they look like... Chris is the only guilty one up in here. Chris is not the only one that have used vulgarity in this church, and we know it. So my thing is, you don't use that in the um, church at all. Just like I'm not going to clean up in that kitchen every time we meet. If you use cups, if you use napkins, I'm not your servant. This is the second time I've cleaned that kitchen. I expect everybody to help. This place is for us. We could be out in the freaking cold right now. Learn to count your blessings. Don't come in here and judge quickly. You need to watch, learn, and listen, and see who the troublemakers are. Don't prejudge people. And I know Chris, he would not have said that if he had known that baby was over there. And for you all to say that and treat him like that, shame on you. It's All right. been under three minutes. Yes, it under, has. Under, under. Oh. I've been keeping track all time. So do I get some more minutes? We need to grow a conscience. We need to have a conscience. The people in the city of Richmond need us. How are we going to help them if we're Richmond, fighting each other? All right, so we're at three. All right, next in, thank you, Teddy. Next in staff. Oh my goodness, Mark. Okay. Um, first, the discussion was about um, um, disruptiveness, and then an issue of uh, a threat of violence came up, and we kind of didn't discuss that. Mm -hmm. I know there have been uh, multiple times that this certain person has threatened violence, and that's not acceptable at all. Um, and I think there's special things we need to do when violence is threatened in this space because that, that can't happen. This needs to be a safe space at all times. Violence is of utmost importance. I understand that. Um, next in staff, we have a new gentleman. I'm sorry, I'm going to stand back so I can see um, Mark, do you have a proposal for how to deal with your, your, you know, your that question? Uh, not at this time, no. I, I feel like uh, we all need to think of something together, and that might not be for tonight, but... Yeah. Okay. All right, gentlemen in the back. So I think this is an important issue that needs to be discussed, but I also want to just remind everyone that Bentley was in the middle of a proposal when this whole diversion took place. So I think it would be in the best interest of the GA to get back to the actual schedule and get back to the proposal that she was in the middle of making as quickly as possible and possibly um, table this impromptu discussion for a later date. 
process, <laughs> to process. All right, point of process. I uh, believe we are still in the middle of discussing the block. There we are. Uh, point of process. Thanks. Same. All right. Same. Okay, here we are. If anyone has a formal proposal that they would, I see one more point of information. Um, at Canal, wasn't there a security working group? Uh, I can speak to that if anyone else wants to. There was a security group. Um, we still had a lot of problems with violence and with conflict, and it was escalating and progressive more towards sort of the end of it, since were especially any kind of heated. And there was a security work group in place. In place. Um, Phil Willado, who publishes the Defenders Truth and Justice newspaper, offered to open up the space for a workshop for security working group. We never followed through on that, that is an idea. Um, but there has been no security official work group in place at all oh. since the eviction of Canal Law. Um, I've got, I don't know what these hand signals mean. Um, I'll just look at the stack. All right, we're still on staff. Are you trying to get the staff to Yes, he is. I had done at some point, but I know things could reshuffle. So. Okay, I feel like the energy is kind of wearing down for working on this block. So we're gonna have two more comments, and then staff is closed. And at the end of that, I'm gonna offer up the floor for any formal proposals for what we can do about this at this time. If we do not come to something that we can do and agree on as a body at this time in this juncture, we're gonna to return to Bentley's proposal, and we will come back to something that needs to be addressed with urgency the situation. All right, so we've got Chris and we've got Alan. Then the stacks goes and we will deal with it. I'm not gonna lie, like, I can't even focus on it. It's other stuff when, when people come in and they have no, there's no regard to, to the process. They don't, they don't, they don't care when you come, you know, process. They, they don't care if you call them. I'm, I'm, I'm not even gonna, I can't even focus when stuff. And I, just, I was up at Occupy Washington DC for a couple of days. Somebody threatened somebody with a knife at night and then they ran off after they threatened the cowardly ran off. Well needless to say, uh, the security they they were in a community tent. The security they 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 had somebody with a camera, they went in with bags, they put all the person's stuff in the bags and took down the tent and they're not welcome back. Okay. Um and, uh, if there's people, if there's people cursing, in front, you know, repeatedly cursing, repeatedly dis disregarding the whole process, um, making threats, then there needs to be. We we have to at least put out. We have to vote that we're not gonna. The very least that we don't condone this behavior. This childish behavior. We've, that's already been long since the sense. Um, I'm sorry. Violent action and violent language was. Thing that so we just stop famous and then don't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, Alan, you're on stack. The reason why we're dealing with this in such an extended fashion is because a block was used, and it's something that was long time in coming. Long time in coming, going way back down to now. I, I would ask my friend who put the block on to remove it, because we have given it serious attention, and I would propose and be willing to be point person to create under whatever fashion is necessary or appropriate, whether we call it a threshing session or a special assembly, that has the task to bring order to our general assemblies and our process through a series of threshing sessions, special assemblies, whatever, outside of GA, to deal with this core important issue for our well-being and effectiveness. I, I, as point person for it, just as with the, the move to amend, I will go to, F, to Wayside Center, Peace Education Center, conflict resolution, de-escalation, facilitation, I will reach out far and wide within our ranks and within our community and within our state and country internet interwebs and the other realms to, to bring this forward and forward and forward until we have addressed this issue. Denial for me is no longer an option. All right. Okay. 
so can I get a temp check on Alan standing up as a point person to, well, actually we have two things that could be made formal proposals. I'm going to open up the floor for formal proposals on how to deal with this after stack. Uh, we've got two more people and then staff is officially closed and I will not hear anyone else in staff. Okay, uh, I guess um, I've got three haven't been minutes. called on yet. Yeah, you haven't, but Chris, you're next okay. and then Thank Graham. you. This whole thing is absolutely ridiculous because I will say that the group doesn't stand up for what it, what it attests to believe in because I have been threatened by people within this movement since before Occupy Richmond began. I've been attacked multiple times in front of dozens of people who sat by and watched somebody attack me who had threatened me before, whether you don't like it or not, that's what happened. You saw it. I wasn't there. Well, then you know about it, and I'm telling you about it. I've been attacked, and nobody did anything. So I'm wondering why all of this feigned you know, concern when people have been cursing in this building as a part of Occupy Richmond since the doors opened here, and people have seen other people attack me, Chris Dorsey, who didn't do anything in response, but get pulled away after this person in particular had threatened me, or when I got assaulted the first night we were down there and certain members of Occupy Richmond started spreading rumors that I was the one that started the fight when Megan and many other people know that I was breaking it up and that we walked the person who was getting harassed by members of Occupy Richmond back to their home, which they felt was the safe thing to do, to protect people, random people who were asking simple political questions to be protected from the group. Now there were lots of people down there that saw that, so I want the nonsense and the B dash 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 S dash 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 to stop, because this is ridiculous. Nobody did anything when they saw people attacking me. Nobody did anything when people were threatening me, but I don't need any protection. But let's get real. So when you actually see violence, you do nothing. But when somebody is making up different rumors and spreading them around, you feel you have to act. That's pathetic. <laughs> I, I, got, I got other things to do right now. But I mean, that's, that's just an absolute joke. It is a joke. You saw, you saw people attacking members of the group after other members of the group saw this person threatening. And that was it. And you did nothing. Graham's on stack. I actually have a proposal, so I'm happy to just roll right into that. Let's start. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Can you stand up when you say it? Sure. So, this is a proposal in regards to threatened or real violence. Um, and at any official or event, I say that if there is any threatened or real violence, <coughs> Um, it immediately goes to, it's brought to the attention of the group and taken immediately to, an, uh, to a vote for ejection on the spot. Um, and, you know, if, if, it's, if it's clear to everybody exactly what happened, it'll pass, we'll move forward. If there's not 90% consensus, then we'll get to talk about it and we'll go from there. Um, to but, clarify that proposal, are you saying permanent ejection or ejection for the GA? Um, <laughs> What? Instead of saying GA that event. I'm sorry, for that. Right. Um, that I hadn't gotten that far. What I would propose would be uh, ejection for at least three GAs, and the only way to re enter back into GA would be for that person to come back and formally apologize slash explain themselves. And then the, it, then the GA would vote to either let them back in or not. Simple as possible. <laughs> okay, so we've so we just heard that proposal. If there is any kind of threat or actual violence, language or otherwise, then that person, then there's an immediate vote, and that person is voted on three meetings or events or whatever into the future that they are evicted three, from. Three GAs, I think it's simple. Three GAs. All right, so they're going to be evicted at that point, then in there for three GAs. That's the proposal. We've got a lot of clarifying questions on this. Let's work together. Let's work together. All right, so who's that? Um, Rich, then Bobby, then Harry, then here. Tasha. Tasha. Um, so 
So my, my clarifying question would be regarding um, parties associated with the escalation process. And to that end, I just, I, I feel that this will get proposed and worked on very immediately in the near future with the facilitation group and other people. And I don't necessarily want to rush a proposal through right now. Next on stack. Uh, Just a point of clarification. Um, if someone is actually physically harmed, I mean, since we fall under an umbrella of nonviolence, we're supposed to embrace that spirit. When someone is physically harmed by another, I don't think it should be taken to a vote. I think immediate ejection is necessary. Mm -hmm. so, <clears throat> so an interesting point I will make uh, is that Chris is right that Phil Lolito actually shoved him at an event. And so by that rule, mm -hmm. Phil Lolito would not be allowed in this space again. And, it, and that's something... May I ask a question? Sure. Because I wasn't there for that. Uh, was it in any way, I mean, was Chris confrontational with him? Not physically. I mean, they, they were verbally not pleased with each other, but Chris was no, not physically confrontational. Okay. Either. So, I mean, it's just, it's, I mean... Uh, that's that's just the case, you know. All right, next in stack. I believe it was me. Um, yeah. Call it. There's a point of process. And point of process trumps. Yeah. All right, Alan, what do you need? Um, could you clarify for me? Because I thought when I spoke, I put a proposal forward that seems to have just vaporized and disappeared. And now there's a second proposal. And my proposal was to return to normal business and refer this to a threshing session, special assembly process, that I would be willing to be point person at. All right. So we've, we're skipping ahead with a proposal. We have a formal proposal. I feel as facilitator, I have to do justice to the first proposal. And let's vote on that if there are no questions. All right. So let's table this. Not table it. But let's direct this. Let's direct our energies to this towards a special working group that Alan is going to be the head of. All right, no. and I'm going to go back point to the person. All right, the point person, words people. All right, <laughs> then we're going to go back to Graham's because I think there was some really good work happening here. But actually, your proposal would contradict that because you want to take it. All right, so, what, so Alan's proposal to drop it and to make this into a work group, we're going to vote on that. And then if that negates and falls through, we're going to go back to this discussion. Point of process? I believe we established that we don't vote on creation and creating affinity groups. We're voting for <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alan, you can't propose on creating a work group, and I no, can't allow No, the proposal allow is to return to our normal business and direct this to a working group to create. Thank you. Thank you. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, so proposal to table the current conversation and return to General Assembly. All in favor. All right. Uh, all in opposition? We've got one, we've got two, we've got three. We're still going, guys. Yes. Oh, All right, I, I recognize you. I'm sorry. There were like six. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. I'm gonna. Oh, six. I'm gonna stand all the way back here. All the way back here. Okay. Can I can I amend my proposal and think in a way that might be helpful for this particular process? Because I, I do see a very real value for what uh, for having a threshing around this and, and establishing a really solid process. That's not something that I just dreamed up in the moment. But I would like to propose that um, in the case of tonight and to have something in place right now, we say that as we witnessed a you know as a threat of violence took place and we are not comfortable with that, we genuinely ask Chris to leave tonight. And then and that does not preclude him from coming back another night. And but then we at least do something about it and say that we're sorry that this precedent hasn't been set before. That's true. We acknowledge that. But this is the precedent that needs to be set. We need to be doing something about this actively and this is what we're going to do tonight and then build a process going forward. Okay. So I'm hearing we're going to synthesize these ideas. Alan feels it upon himself to work in the threshing session and to open up a space for this kind of dialogue. Graham is formally proposing that we ask Chris to leave tonight, and then we continue from there. All right, that's the proposal. All in agreement. What? I'm 
I'm sorry. You're interrupting. I'm sorry. I'm interrupting her because I see this coming out, and we traditionally take clarifying yeah. questions before voting on anything. Um, Thank you. So I'm just going to ask her if she'd like. To, if we would like to hear these clarifying questions first. All right. Check your heart and check your mind. If you want to keep moving, keep moving. And if you if you still really need work on it, ask questions. All right. I'm open my eyes. Everyone with a question, raise their hand now. So, um, this, this stack is of five people who have clarifying questions. Um, it's going to go Tasha first, because she hasn't spoken at all tonight. Um, Santos, Harry, Bobby, Chris. Cool. All right. Okay, my question is, um, I understand that there's Mayday and there's point of process. But is there something to say, like, when somebody is being disruptive, forget about the violent part of it, but just being disruptive to the point that was happening here where we couldn't hear the proposal, what do you do? <coughs> is there a process, is there, is there a sign for that? Like, what do you do when somebody is being completely disruptive? Like, I mean, this gets to the core of it. Because if, if somebody's talking over everyone, this can't go on. It's disruptive. Are you directing the question to the body? Yes, I mean, or it does a little bit. There's three points of process in the back. Answer, 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 answer your question. Okay. Huh? Um, okay. Um, can you please speak to the question? We just oh, think yeah. it falls under that sign. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see. Right. If somebody's you being disruptive, they're it. stepping outside the process. Uh, I can speak to that. All right, okay. so when there's disorder, people throw a point of process. Mm -hmm. And then the facilitator calls on that person. And that's as far as we've gotten, really, hence our current log jam. That's what we're trying to work out. That's the core. Yeah. It is. All right. Santos? Maybe All right. Um, let's see. Harry? Uh, Santos, I think you were in progressive staff before yeah. me. Okay. Um, to you. Well, first of all, what exactly are we taking clarifying questions on? Right now? Graham's, specific proposal? Graham's proposal. The, the specific proposal to set a precedent to ask somebody to leave when they threaten violence. And I would argue to set a precedent that when somebody is totally unruly and extremely disruptive, to also set a precedent that we ask them to leave without exactly codifying exactly how that would work and leave that to a threshing group and an affinity group to work out the exact details for a long-term process. Okay, so, so to set a precedent. So what about your proposal for tonight? Was that also included within the same one, or are we breaking those up? Right now we had a block, and we're trying to take proposals to really make good on that block because there cannot be violence in a, in a house of faith. I, I amended my proposal to what I just said. That's what happened. All right, so we're off. Describe. Yeah, um, I was under the impression that you were synthesizing Alan's and his proposal. Is that not true? No, that is true. Okay. I just lazily called it Graham's proposal. Okay. Then thank you. Should have given Alan credit. All right. <laughs> Stack. Let's take five people. I believe we're already. We have it. Yes, yeah. we're we are. Just I'm just clarifying questions. All right. Who's next in the stack? Hey. Yeah. Okay. Um, first off, I do want to apologize because I know I've been talking a lot tonight. Um, but my question to Graham is: as in this proposal, oh, you are stating only that for this evening, and there is no further statement past only for this evening for this precedent, correct? So that is what I'm saying because based on what's come out of this proposal, we need, it sounds like people would like to have more time to codify a more solid process. May I ask one last little bit to add into that? Sure. Um, with that said, uh, are you opposed to perhaps um, making whatever precedent we make tonight be the standing rule until such time as we create a good standing rule. Give it, say, two weeks' time. To create such a rule? I, I'm comfortable with that if the body is comfortable with that, that as if we set a precedent, I mean, that's kind of what I think a precedent is, but I'm happy to say that we're setting a precedent that 
if you're extremely unruly or if you threaten violence, at the very least you will be asked to leave, or at least to that point. And then that could be become a more a, a more intense process out of threshing. Sir? Uh, just in regards to the being disruptive, I think there needs to be like more of a strike rule with that because if, if, if that's really arbitrary, like if some, someone that might just not like somebody might just say they're being disruptive because they have a personal thing with somebody. Sure. So I think that there needs to be a lot of order in the disruptive clause, but when someone's threatening violence, it's, there's, no, there's no question, but when it comes to being disruptive, you know, hey, I mean, we all have our ex ex eccentricity, so, you know, it's, it's not, you know, we need to also be, like, courteous towards people because, you know, not everyone's, you know. At this time, we've lost the little girl who was the, the point of the whole thing, uh, so outside of the violence that was threatened. So I'm going to take a vote on the group of people who just want to vote in agreement, yes or no, with Graham's proposal, Alan and Graham's proposal. <clears throat> At this time, if you formally support... Megan, I'd actually like, to, based on that, I'd actually like to further amend the proposal right before on. it goes right. to vote. Uh, because I think it's a great point. That, that just being disruptive is, is very different than threatening violence or being violent. And so I would say that we should vote definitely to, to set a precedent that we, you know, that we ask people to leave if they threaten violence or are violent in any way as a baseline and clearly understand that that can become a much more intense um, process and a, and a better process as we go. Um, and I guess maybe that's the only thing. Let's let's vote on that, and then I'd be interested in also voting on a three strike rule if you're highly uh, disruptive. Uh, clarifying question. Uh, just, uh, Questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, if somebody actually commits an act of violence, um, we are going to be calling the police, correct? Uh, I will. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Let's not. Let's. Let's not try. That, well, that is on topic. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a temp check? Because I'm really curious. What do we do if someone hurts each other in this house of Because mm. uh, that's really meaty. Uh, so if, you know, Phil Willard or Chris Dorsey hash it out, um, are we going to call the police? Can I get a yay temp check? Well, or can I get a nay? I'm sorry, if I beat somebody up, if, if I hit somebody up, excuse me. Jesus. All right. Well, guys, we're gonna we're gonna bring it back inside of ourselves because we have come too far. We cannot turn back now. All right. If someone hurts each other, are we gonna call the police? Yes. All in favor? This is just out of curiosity. This is just for us. To this is get for the affinity group. I don't know. I have to say something. Sorry. Can of worms. All right. I want points. This is kind of a point. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right, I see a point of information, I see a random hand signal, I see, and I see Tasha with a point of information. So I'm going to call those out in the order that I saw them. And a clarifying, all right. Okay, so... And, and a point of reference. <laughs> we have had to deal with violence, not here at GAs, but at camp twice. There were two separate policies set, and I don't remember what the second one was concerning violence threatened at Camp Boone. But I suggest we review those policies to perhaps determine one for here and now. Is there anyone who can speak to that? Uh, well, I'm not 100% sure. Can you speak to oh, sir. But okay. what I'm saying is that I'm pretty sure we should not agree to call the cops in every act of threatening or violence because I, I think that would go against a lot of people's beliefs also. Because I personally wouldn't, I mean, I personally wouldn't want the cops called. And I would be very mad if, if we call the cops on everything because that's obviously going against what Occupy stands for and I think that may be a little, you know, a little much. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure we've, we've discussed this before. I don't know, I don't have a, like, you know, citation, but. Next on stack was Bobby and we're going to you on to stack afterwards and you're on stack. And that's point, of process. point of process. Oh, right, point of process. We were just discussing Graham and Alan's proposal, I think we should at least address those proposals in light of the situation before we talk about hypotheticals. Yes. Thank you. Good point. <laughs> so we're going to review our end goal was 8.30.
It is now 8.30. 8.30, and we have accomplished a lot of Ring Around the Rosie. Um, at this point, I'm going to close stack, and we're going to continue with what the hands that have already been in the air. So I'd like for, um, who is next? Let's see. Point of clarification. Clarification on Graham's proposal. Um, on setting a precedent and voting on that um, so that everyone is aware of violence. If any, I, I say that any, this might be an add-on maybe, I don't know if the if, if y'all are interested in this, but if someone has an act of violence done to them, they bring it to the attention of whoever is facilitating, facilitating the meeting. Uh -huh. At that point it goes, we're asked if the, a person who, the person who was perpetrating the violence um, is out of point of process. At that point, we put up point of process because that is the sign for it. At that point, if everyone agrees that they were out of point of process, they are asked to leave. Just as a um, setting a precedent for until um, our work group can come up with something else. Okay, so friendly amendment was, we throw a point of process in front of Graham's amendment that they're asked to leave and then they're asked to leave three times. Yeah. Alright, so Bobby's point of information on that. He actually uh, had dealt with this issue a little bit at Kanawa. And to add on to what she was saying, um, if someone feels threatened or is directly physically intimidated, whatever. Um, remember the safety word was purple. So I feel that if someone feels like what happened to you earlier, you know, yell out, <coughs> everything is stopped, and our immediate attention is turned to that person. Mm -hmm. Was there an actual word? Purple. Yeah. That was what was decided on, yeah. How about that? All right, so <laughs> let's remember the decisions that we've already made. I think we're definitely past the point of purple here tonight, but it is a really helpful point of information to find that. Okay, so we're going to continue with the stack that is closed. These are people that already have their hand raised. Um, is Teddy and then Philip? Do you still have something? What? You do. I'm sorry. Okay, Teddy, you're last. And then we're going to go to Look, I'm going to say this. Um, we want to sit in this room and continue to discriminate against certain individuals like the 1% that we're fighting now. There are individuals, like I said, that are in this room that have done things to Chris and myself put out lies on the internet, block everything. I mean, if we're going to do this and pass this, then we cannot afford to discriminate because I'm tired of it and it's happening all the time. A lot of you all know that this young man is not the only person in this room. And I pray that when you lie down at night, that the spirit that I serve come upon you and make you deal with the truth. He's no better than anybody else, but he's human. And when people sit in this room and they know they have done things, call a man a thief, a liar, a cheat, trying to defraud the organization, getting money from the organization, all of this is wrong. Why were these people disciplined? Why do you pick certain people to pick on and point your finger at when some of you all know that you're doing the very same thing and you cannot help anybody in this organization by playing those games. I've been working this game 32 years and I'm not going to let Occupy Richmond stop my good works. I pray that you all came to my prayers that I would have some help to fight for those that have so much less. But when I see you, some of you guys, you are worse than the people we're fighting. Some of you are lying. Some of you all are cheating. And for the new people that got here, like I said, stop, look, and listen. Don't judge so fast. You come in, you don't know it all. Some of us have been here from the very beginning. Don't prejudge. Now, I say this. When you do this thing, be fair. Whoever does these things, you put them all out. What did, what did I do? I, I'm just talking. We cannot discriminate. And you all know there are people in this group that discriminate. And 
If you're going to discriminate, you can't help the people. I'm, I'm going to leave. I'm just... It's okay. You'll come back. Excuse me? Yeah. I've got a block repeated a block. What is your block? I'm gonna block if she keeps this meeting every, everybody here. We're right. worse. She says she's about we're worse than what, what the people we're fighting against. Like this, I'm not gonna sit here and just be disrespected like that. I don't well, I haven't done anything to you. Oh, not you, baby. Oh, what are you talking about? Before to we everybody. dissolve into complete chaos. We're going to take a vote on Graham's proposal about what to do with some of the races. That's all. Races. You will put one out and put them all out. Right. What's wrong with that? Right. 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 Right.